All right, we'll get back into it now that uh, we're, we're recording again. Uh, so, uh, as we were saying before, this um, when you see this, uh, you have this directional light selected. The hot spot is the concentration of the um, of the uh, light, and the uh, kind of the the fallout field is the darker outline around it, which uh, is more of a way of blurring the shadows and. Uh, so let's just uh, go up to rendering and, and see how this uh, renders out here. So it's still very bright, but you notice there's not a, a big focus in it uh, anymore. Uh, so let's try uh, turning the uh, intensity down a little bit more. Um, or we could turn down the uh, multiply, multiplier a little bit more, but there's also uh, a tool called Decay, which uh, if you choose inverse, actually instead of Decay, you can use uh, an attenuation. So um, pretty much what this does is uh, the attenuation means that the light intensity uh, lessens as you go further away from the source. Um, so, uh, and you can kind of see it, uh, if we select the top view and the front view, you can kind of see it, um, cause, uh, if we turn it on and off, um, you can see that, um, if you, the start is where this, uh, According to the light source, so you can see it's coming uh, closer and further away from the light source. Um, it's like it starts to the closer it is a light source, the earlier it starts to uh, lessen the power of the light. So, if you turn it up, it means that uh, you'll have uh, a lot, a uh, lot more intensity. But if you turn it back down closer to the source, you're going to have um, uh, less intensity. So let's let's keep it uh, closer to light source, and let's so let's. Set this uh, and push this so that it actually uh, the the end is actually past the end of the light source so that we don't get too light. And let's just see what that does there. Hmm, is that done? not done much there? So let's uh. Uh huh. So if you uh, 
So, um, a way to make sure that you're um, the way to make sure that you're uh, when your your light isn't just completely focused in in one spot um, is to select the light and under uh, directional parameters um, come and increase increase the hot spot and beam because uh, right now you, your hot spot is like really. Uh, kind of small, so it's making like a, a very focused light. Whereas if you make it a, a lot larger, uh, at least uh, maybe like twice as large so that you can kind of see in these, uh, um, you kind of see in the, uh, in the screen uh, above, you can kind of see the outline and see how it's, make sure that it's larger than, uh, than your actual uh, form that you're concentrating on. Uh, are we able to, are you able to like see what I'm talking about? Oh, sorry. Um, so select the the actual light source, and over here in the uh, modify tab, you uh, there's all kinds of parameters, and you can scroll down here to directional parameters, and under directional parameters, there's the hot spot. Are you selecting the um, the light source or the receptor of light? Yeah. So if, if you uh, select the light source, there's a, a light source and a light target. Um, so there you go. You can go to the directional parameters and make sure to take that hot spot. If you want, uh, now you can turn the ball off the Hotspot is like you're concentrating on the light, and the fall off is kind of um, it's like gives you a range uh, where it actually, if it's really close, it means that the light really um, the, the light like immediately stops right there, which is why you got that hard edge. Whereas if uh, if you have it uh, like a little further off, it means that that whole area kind of like blends out. So let me kind of show you what I mean. If I turn the hotspot way down. But I have the um, but I have the fall off kind of far out. Hmm. Let's turn down the uh, intensity a little bit so that uh, you can see what I mean by this one. And let's uh, render that again. Guess it's, oh, let's turn off the attenuation real quick. At least that's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> but let's see. So I'm not getting a, a big focus. Maybe I need to turn down this. Uh, Uh, looks like um, if you go under uh, tools, one useful thing is the uh, the light lister, and I see part of the reason why um, why things are getting so bright for me is that I have three skylights for some reason. Like I might have selected and copied them. So whatever it is, I'm just going to turn them off so that I only have one skylight.
And uh, I'm going to go back to this one and turn that intensity back up and see what happens here. So you can kind of see how it fades off in, in, in the distance when I have this in intensity uh, kind of attenuation. Uh, let's actually, I mean this uh, fall off. We're going to make this a lot lower actually, but just to show you, uh, to illustrate the, actually how it works. You can just kind of see how the focus is right there in the center and then uh, the light kind of fades off as you get further away. So uh, it's almost like a gradient effect where the, the center is completely concentrated and the, the edges are uh, a little bit less. So. So here again, let's uh, go into materials and give uh, give this more of a reflective quality. It's one of these uh, more reflective. Uh, there should be more reflective uh, material on your guys' uh, template already, um, and let's just apply that to the to the wall. And let's see what that does. You can kind of see it start reflecting off of itself. And actually, I think we want to make sure that we have um, we do have the lights turned on. Gonna delete these. I'm gonna actually turn my skylight down even less. So, and let's see what that uh, what that does. And uh, just so we get a little more variation, let's uh. Let's change this material that is the uh, that is like the ground plane. Actually, why don't we actually just get a new material for the ground plane? Uh, why don't we make it this uh, make it this kind of? Uh, there, I think there's uh, should be a pattern on there f for you guys that is. Uh, kind of like this wood tile kind of thing. Let's just uh, apply that real quick to the uh, plane. So we'll get a little bit uh, more variance in the forms. Do you guys have that uh, material on your material editor? That's good. Um, so now let's just try rendering this out. Now you can just start to get a little bit more. So let's, uh, why don't we go into perspective or uh, top view and um, we're going to real quick uh, create a camera. And uh, we're just going to have a, a, a standard target camera and uh, we're going to drag it kind of like we do with a light in that general direction and down here under perspective you can go and change it to camera so that you can all of a sudden have this camera view 
Um, so you can uh, adjust the camera by either uh, either moving it in the viewports, or you can use some of these tools down here, like the dolly, or just uh, uh, the hand tool, just truck camera, so you bring it up a little bit. I'm also going to uh, select, you can see, um, one thing you can do is you can select both the target and, um, and the source to move it. So let's say you just select the target for movement. Uh, you go to the front view and you just want to make them look up a little bit. You can move only the target here. Um, so now let's uh, take a look at uh, just a render setup and change this over to camera one and just start seeing how that renders out. So that's actually, uh, let's mess around with that lighting some more. Um, if we select uh, this target source again, uh, let's uh, take that uh, hotspot beam a little bit further out so that it's not quite so concentrated. Let's just see what. So right now I've tried turning on atmosphere shadows and I'm not really sure what it does. So let's just see if it does anything different. Doesn't really seem to do much. So uh, from this view, it doesn't seem to be that interesting. Let's try just moving the uh, actual target light source and see uh, if that makes anything uh, a little bit more interesting. There we go. Now we get some some shadows on one side to make it a, a little bit more interesting, so you get a feel for it. Um, let's also uh, press eight and let's just add an environment. Uh, just to give it a, you could just uh, select a map and uh, let's see if there's any. Uh, any ones in here that we can just use that are easy. I mean, we could always go back and find a, a bitmap in the uh, in the L drive under our textures folder. Um, let's see if it'll let me go to the CC. Oh, well, it won't let me go there, but you guys can uh, go access uh, the the images on uh, on the L drive. Uh, under the 133, 233, um, and uh, they're under the textures, and there should be, uh, you can use all, all formats, so there should be some skies you can use. One, there should be one that looks kind of like this. That's a pretty good one. That's what we were using last week. Yes. Uh, for, for uh, and there you go. And you can 
these uh, yeah, I think it's it's, it's, it's good and uh, you can thank you for uh, the data or whatever. Um, yeah, I think um, and I think you can actually turn the chat on and turn um, serial mapping on and everything. Well, So one of the things you can do um, once you have that that map in there, if you guys manage to load the map, you can uh, drag that uh, map into the material editor as an instance. Um, so the difference between instance and copy is instance it always refers back to that uh, actual map and that actual image, whereas copy actually makes a new uh, a new copy of that image. So instance is is good. And right now it's uh, set up as an environment, uh, just simply as a screen. Um, and uh, if you want to, uh, well, let me adjust it. So let's uh, let's go back in and see uh, real quick and see how this this renders out real quick. So now the um, the inside's very uh, very dark though, um, so we could uh, I'm going to turn down the reflectivity on this uh, material. Oops. So right now I'm just what I'm doing is I'm turning down the the glossiness and reflectivity of this ground material so doesn't look like it's made out of glass. Um, uh, so another tool in addition to this, uh, another tool for lighting uh, that we can use is uh, a, a Omni light, which um, is just kind of a light that you place in a point and it, it spreads light in pretty much every direction. So um, let's, uh, let's place one of those uh, inside the uh, inside here inside the box uh sorry what was that oh um all right so let, sorry but let, let me go back to that i was just kind of looking through that so under this material um there's a diffuse which is kind of like the color of the object um there's reflection um and re refraction where obviously it determines how transparent it is um, so obviously the transparency is set to zero right now, but um, and pretty much all this stuff is on a scale of um, zero to one. Um, so if you want it to be very very reflective, pretty much like uh, a mirror, you turn that up to one. Um, and the glossiness is how much of a shine it gives. Um, so. And actually, let's see what, what this, uh, whatever uh, the material is that we're using here, this is set up. It's, um, it's pretty glossy. Let's turn down the gloss level and just give it, let's also give it some roughness. So it's going to be a little less glossy and a little bit more, uh, more rough. And let's just see what that uh, what that does for the rendering, real quick, before changing any of the lighting. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> well, it was gonna look cool. Um, let's see if my computer can handle this. It's not a good sign. Uh, hopefully your guys' uh, 
programs manage to handle it better than mine. Uh, I don't really like this uh, 3ds Max design. I prefer like this 3ds Max. I would recommend that program. It's pretty much the same thing, but for some reason this seems more buggy to me. Um, let's see if this will allow me to quit this. Hopefully, let me save as I as I quit. Yeah, um, there there is the the chance. Uh, I've had troubles with this uh, with this program. Uh, quite honestly, I think I, I used uh, V-Ray more than than Number Ray, and the materials are a little different. Um, you can always do like overlays, and I, I feel like there should be some way um, to do it here. This is not great. All right. <laughs> um, but you, you pretty much just, uh, I think you just need to go in there. So there's, there's just so many options. Uh, I think you have to to go in there and uh, just test it out because um, I can't give you a, a direct answer right now because there's just, uh, too many different kinds of materials because there's like the they have like the Autodesk ones and they have like the Mental Ray ones and they have these uh, uh, the blend materials. There's all kinds of like these different materials and there's different ways to do it for each one. Um, let me see if I can help you out here real quick and go get into that if I can get back in there. Hopefully the file saved. Are there any other questions? Uh, were you guys able to actually render and not uh, not actually uh, have your program put on it? It just doesn't look very good, Demi. It's a lot like a uh, green architecture. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah. Um. So there we go. Let's hope it's saved. Um. All right, it did save. Let's uh, go in there and make sure to adjust that material so it doesn't crash my computer again. I guess uh, 3ds Max design could be better. Maybe it's just uh, running it on a, a Mac that's giving it troubles. Um, But um, anyways, uh, you wanted to try and change the uh, color once there's already a map on there. I mean, uh, I think that has to do with tint somewhere. Um, let's go up to, uh, where is that? Like this material that already has a, a map for its diffuse. Um, it's diffused color if you go down to general maps uh, is these masonry tiles. And um, oh, here we go. Uh, well, for this one particularly, um, I guess this one has like a color that you can control itself. Um, yeah, if you go under diffuse color, if just just for this one, because this is like a, a preset template, which uh, it's pretty much just using a tiling map in order to and. Uh, and you just set up a general color and then you can give like color variance so that it just gives a little bit of texture to it. So you'll see if you turn up the color variance here, all of a sudden like these colors like vary like pretty highly from the actual original color. Um, 
Uh, but we can get into that a little bit more later. Real quick, before we uh, before we go, I do want to get into the um, the ambient uh, or these. Uh, Uh, sorry, into these other lights, which are these um, standard, which are the the Omni lights, which kind of just you place inside and it just kind of sends light in every direction. Um, so let's place one of those uh, inside uh, the box here. And uh, let's uh, let's move it up uh, off the ground plane a little bit so that it's not uh, sitting there. Um, so let's, uh, you'll see here that our, uh, the intensity is also set to one, so it's liable to be pretty bright. Let's, uh, let's just, uh, render it out and see what happens. So I just threw a, an Omni light inside and you can see that it's pretty much, uh, it also it will cast shadows, so it's pretty much lighting up that whole interior and sending shadows out onto this thing. So it's uh, you can tell it's just way too intense right now. Um, huh? So we're gonna turn down the intensity to 0.4, and we're also gonna scroll down here. Um, to shadow parameters, or I mean to, uh, need to go to uh, atmosphere and effects. Nope, sorry. Where is, oh, advanced effects, there it is. Um, and we're going to turn it to ambient only so uh, it doesn't start casting shadows as well. Um, so, and then this is uh, just return it down to 0.3 even. So let's uh, test that out and see how that goes. Yeah, on the Omni light. So actually, let's see what hap what that actually did. Let's turn it off real quick and r render. If you uh, select the light, you can under general parameters you can just turn it on and off, um, and that way you can uh, test and see actually what the light actually did. So I guess you can see it kind of lights up that whole uh, interior like a lot. Uh, So let's uh let's turn it back on, but let's put it way down to like point one, and let's also give it some uh, decay, an inverse decay. Not really sure what it does. It just means that it gets a little less intense. Um, sorry, if you go back to it. Uh, d decay, which means it just kind of fizzles out and diffuses over the distance. And actually, let's go back to it. And make let's um, go back to the ambient only. Let's turn that ambient only off. I think that's making it kind of. Weird. Let's turn off specular so it doesn't uh, create severe like uh, specular makes it uh, like intense shadow or I mean intense like uh, spots where uh, the light focuses like really high and get like these strange white spots in a rendering. Oops, did I not turn it back on? I did. So I guess uh, once once you turn it to ambient, it really messes with things. But let's turn the uh, the intensity back up, or let's actually turn uh, yeah turn the intensity back up to 0.5 and, and see what that does. So now if there actually was something in there, you'd be able to see <laughs> there's actually uh, a light inside. But um, real quick, let's um, import 
the file that we created earlier, which was just the millions that we created in Rhino, which uh, are also in the L drive, and uh, that same folder, um, it's just going to be called uh, millions. And it's a DWG file. And um, when you have this optional box come, come up, go over to spline rendering. And this will uh, mean you can pretty much change them. Uh, you can make these lines and turn them into to millions or some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of uh, actual physical element as opposed to just lines. So I'm um, going to say going to enable it only in renderer so it doesn't take up memory because a viewport will take up memory to make them thick. And let's just make them rectilinear. Um, and uh, I'd say six feet is probably a bit big for a, for a million. Uh, so let's just try 0 0.5 and uh, 0.25 and just see what uh, see what happens with that. So now you can see that there's actually these physical millions in there. And uh, let's give them uh, a general material. It's just this, uh, let's just give them that general matte material as well. And let's uh, see how that renders out. Oh, as you can see, the mullions come in a bit heavy, so that they look almost more like structure right now, but... Um, if there was actually something inside, you could actually get more uh, variance in this this glass. But let's uh, actually go to this this glass uh, material. Hmm. I guess it's totally. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So let's um let's go real quick to these millions. Um. So it, it, once you have them selected, you can come over here to the modifier and uh, under rendering, um, it'll give you the same option that you had there before. So Let's say you wanted to make those a lot smaller or a lot bigger, let's say. Let's like, we'll turn them into actual looking like structure. Um, and uh, if you want to preview it before you actually render it, you can say enable in viewport. Um, but I'm not really going to. There we go. And you can actually see it come through in the viewport. Let's actually turn this shell and give it some inner amount that's actually more significant as well. Maybe you can start getting some, some real thickness to it. So it usually works better with smaller objects, as you can see over here. You actually get these these weird uh, weird bits coming in here, but uh, you get some uh, some interesting interaction definitely once you get these lights coming. Um, and let's see, if we do have a few more minutes, let's uh, mess around real quick with. Um, uh, pretty much uh, back in in Rhino. Uh, I just, these are pretty much just lines, just curves, and I have them on their own, their own layer, um, that I, and they're just, they're just these simple, uh, simple lines, and then I, uh, select all of them, and, uh, export as a DWG, and, uh, just do it with default settings and everything, and it just comes in as, and, uh, as long as you're maintaining, uh, the same coordinate system, you can just import them 
uh, into the same location. So we're going to, uh, real quick, uh, what was that? <laughs> All right, so uh, real quick, we're going to mess around with this uh, thing called attenuation uh, on the target light. Keep in mind, these are only two kinds of lights, and there's, uh, there's about five more kinds of lights in the program. Uh, so there's a lot more you can do. But uh, let's uh, uh, select the light and come down here to intensity and attenuation. And we're going to use the... Uh, the far attenuation. And uh, so pretty much where it starts is where the um, the light start the light starts to lose intensity, uh, which is this uh, this lighter uh, this lighter part that you can see in the top view. And so let's move that closer and uh, move this a little bit beyond and uh, let's uh, really uh, let's just see how that turns out real quick so you can see it's uh, just a lot less intense of a light uh, right here but let's uh, let's just try uh, actually selecting light again and let's turn up the intensity so let's try two uh, and uh, render it again. Hmm. So hard to get it right here. Uh, let's see, maybe I need to bring this a, a little closer. But you can get it uh, so that the uh, actually let me uh, adjust that attenuation again so if you get it uh, you can mess around with it and you can make it so that you can really see that there's a uh, you get some atmosphere because uh, the spot closer to the camera has a more intense light and the spot further away from the camera has like a dissolved amount of light um, it's a little bit hard to do but um, let me see if I can uh, get that working here let's let's try let's try this out hmm. actually I think we're going to have to turn up the intensity quite a bit in order for it to actually work there you go you can see like there is a bit of uh the intensity like more intense on the right side and it kind of dwindles as you get further away um, so it just gives a sense more sense of depth and it's something you can do with these target lights um, using the attenuation I'm actually going to select this ambient light and I'm gonna turn it down a little bit more and uh, going to copy it using um, where is the copy anyways you can uh, if you hold shift if you hold shift and click on the object uh, while well, you have the move button selected you pretty much just create a copy of the object and uh, an instance, same thing, same rule. So it's just an instance. Um, so now we have a light in the other one as well. And let's uh, let's see how that affects it. Yeah, whatever glass material we have doesn't seem to really have uh, much effect whatsoever. So. You wanted to get a little bit more of an effective glass material. Go in there, you could. 
But uh, is there any questions before we uh, before we head out that I could help with uh, before we start doing something? Are anybody able to get the actual attenuation working? It's kind of a it's kind of a pain because you have to get the intensity way up, and you have to make sure you kind of have to use the imagery on the screen. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Here, um, this is a good tool. The uh, the light lister under tools. Uh, so you can see here I have uh, the Omni. And when I created that copy, uh, I just said instance. So pretty much everything you do to the Omni O1, it happens to it uh, happens to its copy as well. Um, so there, yeah, as you can see, there's Omni O1 and Omni O2 together. Um, and so you can turn them on and off, turn shadows on and off. So let's turn the shadows off on that one and real quick and see what happens with it. So that gets kind of gets rid of that uh, weird shadow that was get, getting cast over there. Well, when you change one, uh, it changes all of them because it's just referencing the other ones. But if you, so yeah, if you if you're using the if you when you copied it, you used instance. Um, I think it's possible that that you can actually uh, under light lister. I think uh, I think you may be able to modify it if you want. Let's see, no, I think it pretty much stays the same. I think uh, in order to uh, in order to actually make it different, you actually have to make a, another physical copy and modify that one. As you can see, there's a lot of intensity there in the front and not so much in the back. Um, but I think that's about all we have time for today. Um, there are any more questions before we, uh, before we head out? All right, good.